as well. So it, it, it is a really cool thing to do, and it, it kind of gets people involved a little bit. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. That's... We'll find the right time to do that. We'll just do it. Okay. And then um, do you ever have a place where people can um, leave their responses to, um, you know, their, their results from, from, you know, participating with it on the show? Um, I, I, you know, uh, uh, people can always access my website and, and just send me emails. Um, but uh, nothing specific like that. No forum or, or uh, anything like that. Well, maybe I can just like uh, let our listeners know that they can if if it if they did have uh, anything to um, hit me up on my Facebook page. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and then I can always bring that up yeah, later on. Yeah, then you know how it worked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. Um, thank you for doing the show. Don't worry. Oh, okay. The other show is ending. So. All right, I'm going to add Studio A to our call. All right, I'm calling him now. With her private IX files. So you're the finder of lost children. Private IX files. Every Wednesday from 10 to 3 night Eastern Studio B on Revolution Radio at Freedom Slips. I regret very hard to take in, but it's your destiny to hold a child. Sometimes it's like readily recognizable as clear constellations, and, and not only that, we have two of them, like we said, there's a first major and there's a minor, and there's, and there's a clear, not just 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 clear, not Megalithic sites, uh, and megalithic regions I've been in many places. They don't mention, they don't say, 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 they don't you didn't give me no fries, I got an empty box. Would you like another? Extra big ass fries. I said I didn't get any. Thank you. Your account has been charged. Your balance is zero. Please what? come back when you can afford oh, to make no, a purchase. No, no, no. I'm sorry you had Come on. I'm My kids are starving. <laughs>
are your host, Terry Joyce. Oh, welcome to Freedom of Joy Show on Revolution Radio. Uh, thank you very much for listening to the show. And, uh, you know, we have, a, a, I'm excited about this show. I think it's going to be um, a great topic. Uh, that we have coming up. Uh, we are going to explore uh, the differences between uh, Western medicine and holistic medicine uh, with uh, my guest, uh, Chris Kaler, who probably a lot of the listeners out there have um, have listened to him before and uh, maybe even um, be familiar uh, with some of his work uh, that he does, uh, some of his healing work. Uh, just want to let you guys know that we are listener supported. So, uh, you know, we uh, none of us are paid for what we're doing. We are all volunteers and, uh, you know, getting uh, our, our messages and information out to you. Uh, so if you could, um, you know, go to the website and uh, give us a donation. Keep us going. I know some of you probably are regular donors to us. We want to thank you for your efforts uh, and for uh, your donations and keeping us uh, going. So um, just make sure that you do that. Uh, and thank you. Uh, uh, and also, I want to give a shout out to the people that are in the chat room today. Uh, you know, please do um, you know, interact with us. Um, you know, if you have any questions uh, for myself, uh, as well as our guest today, um, I, we would love to um, hear from you. And uh, in the second hour, uh, we'll, we will be taking calls here on the network. Uh, and uh, we, later on, I'm going to introduce, uh, we're going to have Dino Dad 32 coming on, a gun advocate. Um, he has a website at uh, dinodad32.com. He's going to be with us today um, uh, on the show um, because I just, you know, I love having him on the show and he's going to give us an updated uh, gun report. Uh, just a little bit of a background on me. Um, I am fa a fairly new show here on the network. Uh, I believe this is my 10th show broadcasting and uh, I'm really happy to be um, you know a part of this uh, a part of the team and a part a part of Revolution Radio uh, my background is uh, that I have primarily worked as a stand-up comedian uh, and uh, you know have worked in uh, acting in the in the entertainment business and uh, pretty much uh, kind of you know lived in the you know matrix of Hollywood uh, I participated on a reality show, which uh, basically I feel that uh, reality television uh, socially is socially engineering us into, um, you know, a, a belief of Darwinism, uh, where uh, you know uh, it's 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 where you know it's it's an I win you lose mentality, uh, and this is part of uh, you know my awakening. To uh, to how um, the mainstream media is, uh, you know, not really giving us um, the information uh, that's out there, and you know, speaking of mainstream media, uh, I, you know, sometimes uh, I, I watch The View, um, and, I, and and you know, I hate to admit really that um, I really watch any mainstream television because my feeling is is just just turn the box off because it's got so much dis disinformation. And I could swear there's something that goes on with commercials that, you know, eat the, the, eat the heart, I may try so hard not, not to have it capture my attention, but it seems like for some reason my, I seem to focus even harder on the commercials, which are so annoying to me. So I don't know what they're doing to, uh, to make an imprint on our brain and just, you know, have this, you know, focus on what that commercial is, but I could swear it's doing something. Um, but, uh, yeah. So anyway, I, I, I was watching the view. I actually, uh, kind of take care of a, of a man or kind of take care of him. One of my roommates is 93 years old, Bob. And, uh, you know, he has the view on in the morning when I come in and to, you know, give him his um, medications. And, uh, you know, there was a, the, the subject matter this week, and they, they've talked about this a couple times. Uh, there was a woman who um, actually did porn uh, to pay for her education at Duke University. And uh, she's caused a, quite a bit of controversy for people. One is that she's uh, pointed out that she's been watching porn since she was 12 years old and that she felt that it uh, empowered her as a woman to take charge and um, make money 
uh, to to go to go to school. But what's happened is is that at Duke University, she has um, gotten death threats and harassed and you know blah 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 blah. And, you know. Barbara Wawa, you know, comes out. She has this concerned face, like, oh, we're just so concerned that you feel that your female empowerment is based on you're using your sexuality for money. And, um, you know, Sherry Shepard was like, oh, my heart goes out to you. My heart goes out to you. And, you know, in my opinion, this is my view. It's my view beyond the view is that, you know, there's this, you know, oh, you know, we wish you didn't have to sell your body to go to Duke University, you know, oh, it's, you know, how could you as a woman feel that you have, like, female empowerment by selling your sexuality, oh, we feel so bad because there's this moral judgment of this moral high ground against this woman who says, you know what, yeah, I feel that, you know, I can do this with my body, and this is the way I'm going to pay my university. Now, I might have my own personal views on this, you know, um, my question is, is what is wrong with our educational system? Nobody ever asked this question. What is wrong with our educational system that a woman actually has to do porn in order to afford her tuition? You know, it's like, it's like, yeah, it's Duke University, but it seems like the only people that are allowed to go to the university are the people who are elite or have big money or families or already tapped in to be those that are educated. And if anybody really wants to, you know, step out of that box, you know, she has to do porn to, you know, to actually go to school. And, you know, there's always that thing about, you know, how they're like, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I've been to strip clubs. Okay. I've even done stand up in strip clubs. Uh, you know, um, uh, you know, I, I, and, but, you know, you always hear the story of like the girl, like she's stripping her way to go to be a lawyer or she's stripping to save it for this. And, and, you know, almost all strippers have another story of why they're doing something just to get to something else. When you are a person that doesn't have money and you're trying to get into um, a better life, you know, um, what, you know, the, the, the fact of the matter is, is that we as a society are put in a position to compromise ourselves in order to get ahead. And in that sense, I, let's take the moral judgment away from this woman, uh, is, 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 is my opinion about it. Yeah, um, you know, it's sad that she is, you know, using her sexuality and feeling a sense of empowerment as an exchange for a monetary service or a monetary money. And yet some people might go, you know what, that's the oldest profession that's existed since the beginning of time. There's nothing new here about someone being a sex worker or a woman being a sex worker. And, you know, some women are actually sex slaves, and that's a whole other conversation to go into. Um, which, you know, that in itself, I feel, is um, a spiritual and, um, you know, detrimental way of being. Um, you know, we really shouldn't, I feel that... Um, we shouldn't have to like compromise our bodies um, as a woman, as our sexuality for anything. And it is a big issue in this world. Um, you know, I mean, it, it, you know, it comes down in many, many different forms. I mean, how many women aren't out there to marry a doctor simply because they want to have, you know, all the different, you know, uh, they want to have a good life, marry up, marry up, marry up, because the man's going to provide for you. But how is that really any different in some ways than the young woman that goes, I want an education, so I'm going to do a lot of porn and uh, make some money, and I'm not going to have an issue with it. And uh, so that's my, um, my, 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 my little thought on, on that. Um, you know, I, I don't know what the answer is here. I, I, I don't have all the answers. All I'm saying is that I'm wanting to explore the topic of what, of what that might be about. It affects me because I'm a woman and I know what it's like to, um, to work with your sexuality in, in business. I've, I've been in show business, you know, um, people would go, you know, I, I would say sexual harassment. Oh, that doesn't bother me. I'm in show business. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it's, it, it is the way it is. And, you know, I think at some point in entertainment and any type of business, sometimes, uh, a woman has the, um, the, the, the moment 
of, of, of that comp uncompromising moment where it's put out on the table for you. Hey, you do this, you're going to get this. And, you know, again, that's a private choice between every woman. Um, but, you know, it, 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 it is what it is. Another part of the story that I'd like to bring up, and I'm talking about young people who are trying to get an education. Let's talk about, like, the amount of, if you don't have money, then you get a bunch of student loans or, you know, financial aid. I mean, financial aid, you don't have to pay it back, but let's talk about student loans here. I uh, do shows oftentimes in Montana, and uh, this one place... There's always a group of fracker, frackers. They, there's, I call it the fracking table. And apparently, you know, they stay uh, at this place, and the, and the group of fracking guys are there. And there was one young man that was 25 years old who was part of the fracking team. And I, I will say, you know, yeah, I might be more open-minded about the porn business, but I'm completely against fracking. Uh, you know, I mean, I think that is just the worst thing that we could be doing to the planet right now. And I do believe that there are um, information out there of, re of energy and technology um, out there that has been hidden from us um, in, in, in terms of, you know, so that the corporations uh, that are in the elite that's in power can keep having oil um, being um, our, our main source of energy in terms of driving our cars and fuel. So, um, and I, I'm sure that you guys that are listening right now, if you're listening to this, this network, you, you probably know what fracking is. So I'm, I'm not really going to go into it, but I don't know if you know that um, when the people who are doing the work doing it, um, there's a certain gas that it's emitted, it will kill you instantly. And, uh, and there's no time, and they have to have um, trained to keep themselves covered and know how to uh, make sure that they don't accidentally inhale this gas and die. So basically, there's this 25-year-old man um, who is uh, risking his life uh, to go down and maybe inhale this gas. And also, you know, I feel that, in, in a sense, I, I, my feeling is, is that we're karmically uh, responsible. Um, you know, when we say, you know, whose responsibility is that, that the planet is okay? Well, it's our responsibility to make sure that the planet is, is, is okay. You know, we are the keepers of our, of our Earth. And so I'm thinking, why, you know, and I asked him, I said, why are you doing this? Why are you fracking? You're 25 years old. You have your entire world ahead of you. You can do anything with your life. And he said, I have to pay off student loans. <laughs> He's fracking because he has to pay off student, you know, student, student loans. You know, I talked to many of the people who were doing it. I asked them, I said, why are you doing this? Because um, I, I the, the job market is for me, and I have no other choices but to do this. And that's what's happening in our country. What's happening right now in America, and, it, you know, uh, is, is and, I, and I, I can't speak for the other countries. Um, you know, I, I maybe someone else can include this with, with, with me. But what's happening here is pe we are pushed to the line to compromise ourselves, to feed our families, to get an education, to, 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 to be able to survive in this market. Sure, that girl could maybe have not have done porn you know, to, to, to go to school, but let me tell you something, working at McDonald's for minimum wage that's below $11 an hour isn't going to pay her tuition at Duke University. It's basically going to keep her at McDonald's for the rest of her life, and she'll be shopping at Walmart, and we all know what Walmart's about. Anyway, I'm going to um, get off my, uh, my soapbox here. I love to have my morning soapbox of thoughts in the morning, and I hope you're enjoying it just as much as maybe I am, but oh well. Um, and, uh, but I'd like to introduce, um, basically, you know, Dino's kind of pretty much co-hosting with me today, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm super happy to have him here. Welcome to the show, Dino. Good afternoon, Terry. Good afternoon on the East Coast, and thank you for letting me co-host with you this morning. Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, I, you know, I'm thinking, I, I, you know, because, like, you're going to be regularly on the show. I mean, uh, there's sometimes where I feel, and, and you too as well, is that when we have a guest, um, it spurs interest in you and as well as me, and we feel that we're going to be a good team 
in, in, in interviewing. I know that sometimes you won't always be able to be on the show. But I really, the main thing about you, Dino, is I really love the fact that you're so courageous in upholding the Second Amendment, uh, despite um, the uh, mainstream media. And, and, you know, again, and I'm a liberal, but the left-wing liberal agenda that's basically controlled <laughs> by the mainstream media, um, uh, you know, you're fighting all these things. Uh, and, um, you know, do you personally have people in your, like, like, for example, if you are friends with somebody and you say, yeah, I'm a gun advocate, um, does that, does that raise a lot of heated debates with, with friends for you? Well, I, I can tell you I've lost a lot of Facebook friends and I've deleted a lot of Facebook friends because of their stance on guns. And, uh, you know, I was listen to a really good comedian this week called Lee Camp, and he had a, a viewer mail letter that kind of sums it all up. He says, oh, why are you spending all your time wasting your time with all this political stuff? Don't you got a real job and a family to take care of? But I think the, uh, the idea of standing up for the Second Amendment, you just have to stand up for something today. There's so many terrible things that are going on in this country today. And if you don't stand up and speak out, and I'm doing a little tiny bit. You know, I have a, a you know, YouTube channel, and I talk about the government and about gun rights, and that's, you know, the least that we can do. I mean, Terry Joyce is out there, you know, protesting and helping. I just, you know, do it through the Internet and try to get people to be aware of what's going on out there. And, you know, there's lots of things going on today with, uh, you know, gun rights being violated and people losing their rights, all types of rights. Their first, second, and uh, fourth and fifth amendment are just are gone today. Don't you think, Terry? Um, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm concerned about, uh, and again, you know, and, and I don't know if our listeners know our history. I mean, and I, I'm, I'm going to bring it up for a minute because I think this is real life. Uh, you know, Dean and I had a huge argument uh, one time um, about uh, gun control and uh, in relation, and also about marijuana um, because I'm a, I'm a marijuana advocate. And so, you know, um, but it wasn't until, you know, like later on as things manifested and I started to watch what was going on in the world, I started to question things that I went, oh my God, you know, Dino is actually, um, we're, we're uh, very similar to one another. And my thought is, it's like, you know, why fight, why fight with one another? You know, it, it's like, it, it's, it's becoming unified in an overall cause of things. And again, you know, a lot of it has to do with um, how, you know, what we, in some ways, I think how we've been conditioned to, to view things. What is, is it, what do you think, Dino? I don't remember having an argument about gun control uh, between us, but I do remember, you know, we had, we're just going about it a different way as far as, you know, what's going on with uh, legalized marijuana today. And we're not 100% on the same page, but you're right, you know, we really turned around after, we've known each other for 20 years, and we really, both of us are on the same page when it comes to freedom and rights, and, you know, we, you know, we complement each other well. But, uh, you know, I have some important news this morning on, uh, you know, my gun news report. Okay. Well, what's going on today, and the, the show, you know, what you started out talking about in the show with The View and um, porn and all this, you know, that was pretty heavy. I didn't expect that. <laughs> but, uh, the View is not, you know, the cornerstone of news that we should just <laughs> don't, right, right. Don't, you know, value their opinion too highly. Right. But it, in gun news today, uh, it's very important that everybody knows about what's going on in San Diego, California, which is very close to where I live. There is a uh, manufacturer called Ares Armory, and what they make there basically is 80% uh, lowers. For anybody who doesn't understand weapons, an 80% lower is a, uh, a part of a gun that you have to register once it's completed, that's 80% done. And you have to take it at home and finish off the, the, the last 20%. Now, once you make that lower, that lower part of the gun, and finish it off, then you can buy all the other pieces just over the counter legally and make your own gun. Now, legally, you're allowed to make one gun per year, and people have been buying these 80% lowers 
taking them to the drill press and completing them, and now you have a completely, what some people call, unregistered weapon. And that's the problem today. They're calling them the ghost guns. That You know, it's a gun that's out there that's not registered. But the law provides for and has on the books that you can make these things, and they're legal, as long as you don't want to sell them or transfer them. It's just for your own personal use. You can, If you're sitting in a house and you mill out a gun, it's yours. You don't have to register. And that's the law. Now, what's happened today is that the ATF, has gone into Ares Armory and raided their facility and gotten the names of the people that have gone there and bought these 80% lowers. And I hope people understand what this 80% lower is. Basically, it's a hunk of metal with a little bit of it, you know, chopped out, and you just got to finish it off. Now, they could sell that to you over the counter. It's a paperweight unless you finish it. Once you finish it, then you, if you assemble it, you might have a gun if you know what you're doing. And it's not that difficult. But what they're doing today is completely against the law. The ATF has no right to go in there and get their list of clients. And we should all be concerned about this. This is, you know, Nazi Germany. These guys are going in there, breaking into their facility, and finding out who bought these guns. And there's millions of these guns out there. Um, Terry, is it, is it clear, you know, do you understand what I'm talking about when I say 80% lower? Yes. You know, and like I said, the law provides that you can make one of these guns yourself. And what they're doing there is 100% legal. And the ATF is breaking the law. They're, they're going way beyond what their scope of legalities. You know, they're harassing these manufacturers. And this is happening all throughout the state. Did you know that California has some of the highest... Uh, gun manufacturers like the most in the country and they're leaving the state because they're being harassed you know here's industry i mean how many industries today